Hey everyone, let's talk about bismuth. Today I'm going to show you how to grow a cluster of large bismuth crystals. Watch as we turn this piece of raw bismuth into something magical. We're going to start off with this brick of raw bismuth. They usually come in large bricks, so I break them up so they melt easier. Bismuth is very heavy, but also quite brittle, so I usually drop it or use a hammer and chisel to break it up. Next, we have to melt the bismuth. You can use either a gas burner or an electric hot plate. Make sure to use stainless steel pots and bowls. Use old ones that won't be going back into the kitchen. Today we are using the gas burner. Now let's load the melting pot with our raw bismuth chunks. I usually use about 30 pounds. Bismuth melts at about 270 degrees Celsius. It is also non-toxic, so it is safe to use. Now let's turn on the flames and wait for it all to melt. Here is where the real fun begins. I've been experimenting with bismuth for over five years now, and I still get excited every time. Isn't watching bismuth melt satisfying? Since bismuth is so dense, all the impurities will stay on the surface. Now that it is all melted, we are going to skim off the impurities. See how the color of the liquid changes? As always, use a stainless steel bowl to grow the crystals in. Preheat the bowl. This ensures there is no water or moisture, as water and liquid bismuth don't mix well. Get a larger bowl and line it with insulation. This lets the molten bismuth cool slower, which allows the crystals to grow to their full size. Turn off the burner and pour the melted bismuth into the bowl. Doesn't that look like a silver waterfall? Place the insulated bowl back on top of the burner. Now place the bowl full of liquid bismuth into the insulated bowl. Welding gloves are a huge help. Skim and remove the impurities from the surface again. Now we wait for the bismuth to start cooling down. Once the bismuth has cooled enough, add a small seed stone. This will create a difference in the surface temperature and act as a focal point for the crystal to grow in the middle of the bowl. If you look closely, you can see the crystal growth around the seed on the surface. Once enough time has passed, poke the crystal with a metal pick to feel how large the crystal has grown. If it is bobbing, it hasn't grown to the bottom of the bowl yet. Use the metal pick to keep the crystal from solidifying to the bowl, as well as to clear off the surface residue. The angled pick is a great tool to have. Here you can see the crystal is no longer bobbing, but rather getting pushed sideways. This means it has hit the bottom of the bowl. We're in for a huge crystal. Finish skimming the surface film while making sure to keep the crystal from freezing to the bowl. Now it is time to pull out the crystal. Using a pair of metal tongs, grab the crystal firmly, then slowly and steadily pull it up out of the liquid bismuth. Every bismuth crystal is unique, so you never know what you're going to get. As we can see, the colors of the crystal are blue, gold, and purple. These will start to change as the metal cools down. The colors come from a thin layer of oxide that forms on the surface of the crystal. Wow, this crystal is over one kilogram. That's absolutely massive. Notice how the colors are different now that the crystal is cool. And just like that, we took a chunk of silvery metal and turned it into a beautiful, shiny, geometric bismuth crystal. 
For more videos, instructions, tips, and just general information about bismuth crystals, please like and subscribe.